Chapter 91 Do not flirt with her. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 91 Do not flirt with her translator. Hen Yi Translations Editor Hen Yi Translations Major Xia had always hidden his feelings very well. He swiftly concealed his slight embarrassment in his eyes, without any trace of an oddity on his handsome and elegant face. Go back to your room to try them on. There's still time to return them if they don't fit. Once again, he subtly lowered his eyes. But this time, he dared not look at Yi Jian's bare feet, which were as fine looking as pearls and jade. Instead, he looked at her white and slender calves, tightening his mouth. She had extraordinary fair skin, which was shining like milky white porcelain glaze. And it was so tender that it might turn red if anyone pressed it gently. Nevertheless, the white jade had a flaw at this moment. An obvious bruise had appeared on her right shank. Xia Jinyuan looked at it, tightened his eyes and hunched over suddenly. Don't move. While Yi Jian was stepping back, he said in a deep and calm voice, let me check if your bones are injured. The black and blue bruise had taken up a large area. He wondered how the girl could endure it. His abrupt actions bewildered Yi Jian. Automatically, she took a step backward. As a result, he used his big hand to grab her ankle and, and told her not to move. Although she was only 14 years old in this lifetime, she lived up to the age of 28 in her past life. However, never had she ever had a romantic relationship or kissed anyone, either in her past life nor current life. No wonder Yi Jian was shocked. Yi Jian thought that she had understood life and death thoroughly and that she was indifferent by nature. But as Major Xia grasped her ankle, she blushed, because no man had ever held her hands. She had just taken a hot shower, so her skin was as fair and tender as a shelled, boiled egg. Plus the blush on her face, she was issuing a kind of resplendent and breathtaking beauty. Lucky for Major Xia, he was paying attention to her wound only. His hand that was grabbing Yi Jian's ankle had slender fingers and a warm palm. It seemed that the temperature of the skin held by him was higher than that of other areas. It was so scorchingly hot that Yi Jian wanted to run away. That, no, Yi Jian finally calmed down. But then, she was astonished by his next movements. Unexpectedly, with a serious and focused facial expression, he, he knelt down on one knee, examining Yi Jian's injured shank which was kicked. His jade dot like slender fingers pressed the wound gently, starting from the outside then to the middle. Embarrassed, Yi Jian was tense all over. Since Xia Jinyuan was holding her ankle, he knew clearly how she had reacted physically. He found it amusing. Kiddo, why are you nervous? I'm just checking your wound. Now that the man had brought up the topic, Yi Jian felt that her face was burning even worse. There's no way she could, ignore his touch, all right? This was the first time that a man grabbed her ankle. She had never experienced embarrassment before. But at this moment, she really wanted to escape. If you step back again, I don't mind picking you up to your bed for examination. A sentence that could cause misunderstandings came from his thin lips slowly. Smiling, Xia Jinyuan raised his eyes to look at her. Yi Jian was speechless. She thought, Major Xia, I am actually an adult. What you just said was flirting with me. Do you understand? Major Xia did not understand. Starting at the age of 14, as he was a genius, he finished junior high and senior high courses in two years. At the age of 16, thanks to his excellent academic and physical performances, he was admitted into the best military school. Since then, he was surrounded by men. He had seen more sows than females all year round. Chapter 92 The Establishment of Admiration You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 92 The Establishment of Admiration Translator Hen Yi Translations Editor Hen Yi Translations Major Xia did not understand. Starting at the age of 14, as he was a genius, he finished junior high and senior high courses in two years. At the age of 16, thanks to his excellent academic and physical performances, he was admitted into the best military school. Since then, he was surrounded by men. 
he had seen more sows than females all year round. He said what he said to Yi Jian casually like telling a joke, without any disrespect. Yi Jian sighed gently in her heart. A dangerous man. I must stay away from him. If I am not careful, he might tease me again. As Yi Jian lowered her head, she saw his clean and bright forehead, and his eyelashes which were thicker than that of women, and his sometimes that sexy, sometimes that fierce thin lips beneath his handsome and tall nose bridge. When he was speaking, his exquisite and elegant face contained a gentle smile. It was such a pleasure to talk to him that no one would like to end the conversation with him. When he was holding a gun, the look in his eyes was like a sharp sword that is about to cut through the darkness, thus intimidating his enemies. But his comrades would feel very safe around him and trust him with their whole heart. Yi Jian had been observing him for a while before she quietly looked away. Dangerous man. She must stop looking at him. The longer she looked at him, the more shining points of him she would find. And then she would increasingly admire him. Girl, you shouldn't have endured this kind of pain without doing nothing, Xia Jinyuan, who was pressing gently around the bruise, tightened his lips. It's evident that he was in a bad mood. Large areas of soft tissue have a contusion, and the bleeding under your skin is extending. Don't you feel the pain? How can you endure it till now? Both his facial expressions and his words were showing that he was upset. The middle part is black and blue and is swollen, as he used his thumb to press it gently, he heard Yi Jian gasping in pain. He raised his head, gazing at Yi Jian with his dark eyes. Go to the hospital to take an X.Ray. I'm afraid you might have a fracture, said he in a deep voice. Fracture. It's not that severe. No need. I know how it is, with a polite smile, Yi Jian refused him. There is no broken bone. But it is a bit painful. All right, the look in Major Xia's eyes was extremely chilly. If she turned him down outright, no way she could sleep tonight. She had always known how to survive, that's why she admitted that she was in pain. She was trying to turn him down in another way. Yi Jian was correct. If she insisted that she was completely fine, Xia Jinyuan would have lifted her up and headed to the hospital without hesitation. He got up. With a serious look on his handsome face, he gazed at this strong little girl for quite a while, feeling sorry for her. He smiled and said, Go back to your room. I'm going to fetch some medicinal oil for you to rub on your wound. She had lost her parents who could provide for her. She had to handle everything on her own. Maybe that's why she was so strong. After applying the medicinal oil to her wound, Yi Jian was still excited, perhaps due to the thrilling fight in the rainy night. Lying in her bed, every time Yi Jian closed her eyes, the scenarios of her wrestling against the woman would occur to her. That silver wire was a very useful defense weapon. She wondered where she could get one. As she recollected what happened in that very night, she gradually fell asleep. At half past seven in the morning, the two of them, who had finished morning jogging and had breakfast together, drove to the municipal police station. The jeep, which was smeared with dirt last night, had been cleaned up at some point and was emitting a faint smell of mint. The smell of mint belonged to Xia Jinyuan. When you are there, all you need to say is that you found that pistol. I will be waiting for you outside, Xia Jinyuan reminded her again. But he didn't worry that she would fear anything. She was a brave girl. Chapter 93 What Sorts of Surprises? You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 93 What Sorts of Surprises Translator? Hen Yi Translations Editor Hen Yi Translation Smiling, Xia Jinyuan looked at Yi Jian who seemed rather calm. Since she had done nothing wrong, she had no mental burden at all about the upcoming interview at the police station. Indeed, she was carefree. It's not that she had done anything evil. Why should she feel scared? Before entering the interrogation room, Yi Jian smiled calmly at him. And then, she entered the room with two police officers, a female and a male. Xia Jinyuan stood outside for around three minutes before heading to the commissioner's office. Major Xia, take a seat, Commissioner Liu of the municipal police station greeted Xia Jinyuan warmly. 
From his tone, it's clear that they had known each other for years. Commissioner Liu didn't sit down until he had made a cup of tea for Xia Jinyuan. Leader Xia called me last night and I mentioned that I saw you at the police station yesterday. He said that he hoped that you would call him if you have time. The municipal police station was subordinate to the provincial department of public security, which was subject to the Ministry of Public Security. Thank you, Commissioner Liu, Xia Jinyuan took over the cup of tea handed to him by the commissioner. Thanks to his natural dignified disposition, he kept calm in front of the commissioner of a municipal police station. He took a sip of the tea. While Commissioner Liu was smiling, he lifted his eyes and smiled. There is one thing I need your help with, Commissioner Liu. He didn't say, please, or excuse me. That a need in his words had expressed his attitude. Commissioner Liu must help him. The smile on Commissioner Liu's face became more obvious as he heard Xia Jinyuan's words. Major Xia, you are welcome. Just tell me what to do. Ha! <laughs> ha! You have been here for half a year, and this is the first time you want my help. It was well known that in the Beijing city, Major Xia had seldom asked anyone for a favor. Ever since Major Xia came to this place, numerous people had hoped he would ask for something from them someday. But Major Xia had been silent for half a year. Unexpectedly, such a great opportunity occurred to Commissioner Liu. When Xia Jinyuan finished his words, Commissioner Liu burst into laughter. So, that's the issue you were referring to. No problem at all. I will get it later and let you have a copy. All right, thank you, Commissioner Liu, Xia Jinyuan had never been fond of small talks. Now that he had achieved his goal, he stood up right away. I'm going to see that girl. She's a timid middle school student. I need to buck her up. Since he had stood up, Commissioner Liu naturally wanted to see him off. Nevertheless, Xia Jinyuan waved his hands as a gesture of refusal. I know the routes in the police station. Commissioner Liu, I won't take up your time. See you later. He was never a fan of small talks, that's why he had investigated Commissioner Liu before asking him for help. He would not have visited Commissioner Liu if he discovered he was problematic. Within half an hour, the interview with Yi Jian had finished because her answers were flawless. Talking and laughing, she walked out of the interrogation room with the two police officers. Xia Jinyuan grabbed the bag handed to him by Commissioner Liu and exchanged a few words with him. Then, he walked towards Yi Jian. Commissioner Liu had got the thing done in five minutes. The reason Xia Jinyuan didn't let Commissioner Liu see him off was that he hoped he could handle the issue as soon as possible so that he could give the girl a surprise in time. Thank you for your hard work, Yi Jian apologized to the police officers. I didn't expect that my casual behavior would bother you. I'm so sorry. She was an honest person. One could sense her sincerity from her words and facial expressions. She was very similar to Xia Jinyuan in this aspect. While saying goodbye to the police officers, Yi Jian had seen the proud and cold Xia Jinyuan striding to her from the end of the corridor. So, she sped up and walked to him as well. Chapter 94 The Considerate Major Xia You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 94 The Considerate Major Xia Translator Hen Yi Translations Editor Hen Yi Translations Xia Jinyuan watched Yi Jian as she walked towards him. His deep and dark eyes contained a tender smile. Next stop is the library. We can head back to the town before 10 o'clock. Unlike other civilians who were terrified before entering the police station and drenched in cold sweat as they left, this audacious girl was not afraid at all because she could say goodbye to the two police officers casually. Never had Yi Jian been to the municipal library. In her past life, she only went to the municipal bus station. Smiling, she asked, it's not very far, is it? I want to buy more learning materials. She wanted to bring back all the textbooks and mock exams of the ninth grade. Ten minutes, said Xia Jinyuan. Holding a file bag given to him by Commissioner Liu, leisurely and elegantly, he stepped forward. Here is your exclusive driver who is here for you anytime, Yi Jian. Exclusive driver. 
I'm afraid the public would be outraged if a major serves as my exclusive driver, thought Yi Jian. When they arrived at the library, Yi Jian went directly to the area of review materials for middle school students on the third floor, choosing five sets of rather difficult comprehensive exam paper of the eighth grade and the highlighted knowledge, and exam paper of the ninth grade. Standing next to her, Xia Jinyuan had liked to give her some advice at the beginning. As he saw her slender fingers sweeping through piles of exam paper and picking up several sets for comparison, he realized that his suggestions would be unnecessary. Xia Jinyuan was not much surprised when Yi Jian picked up the review materials of the ninth grade. Instead, he just slightly raised his eyebrows, becoming more intrigued. Are you going to review all of these within this year? asked Xia Jinyuan as they went out of the library. He was carrying all the learning materials and the exam paper. Do you plan to spend your summer vacation reviewing these materials? Yi Jian, who had got into the car, turned around to look at the large piles of materials on the back seat. Smiling, she said casually, Uh, dot huh. I'm going to learn by myself. If I can manage, I can devote the whole year of my ninth grade to training. Xia Jinyuan started his car. He remained silent for a short while. When he looked at her again, there was a subtle astonished look in his black eyes. The whole year of your ninth grade. You mean, you are planning to study all the textbooks of the 8th and 9th grade by yourself in the first half of the year? Although he also worked hard from the age of 14 and enrolled in the military school at 16, it wasn't a complete self.study process for him. That's the plan. So far, it isn't a very difficult thing. I want to be a senior high student in the provincial number one middle school, which is far away from my town so I will only come back during the summer and winter vacation. So, I must seize the time. Since she had gotten a second chance to live a life, how could she afford to waste the wonderful times? Yi Jian was extremely harsh on herself. For her, hardships were nothing. How could she disappoint Grandpa Jen and Principal Chen who had been educating her painstakingly? So, it was really not a big deal for her to endure hardships. Xia Jinyuan gazed at her. A pearl would always shine, and the time would come for a diamond in the rough. Her persistence and endurance would lay the foundation for her success, enabling her to ascend to her peak steadily and step by step in the future. Work hard and do not let down the two seniors. Your gradual progress would be the biggest reward for them, said Xia Jinyuan gently to Yi Jian who was working hard so as not to disappoint herself or her seniors. He was driving his car steadily to the downtown area. Yi Jian nodded slightly and picked up a set of exam paper to read slowly. Chapter 95 It was a surprise indeed. You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 95 It was a surprise indeed translator. Hen Yi Translations Editor Hen Yi translations her smooth and black hair drooped onto her shoulders. Looking from one side, her face was exquisite. She was so concentrated that Xia Jinyuan could not bear to bother her. Inadvertently, he gazed at her elegant and gorgeous swan dot-like neck for a few seconds. And then, he calmly looked away. Absorbed in the exam paper, Yi Jian didn't notice his gaze. Occasionally, her long and white fingers would gently stroke across the paper. She was calculating the last difficult puzzle. Xia Jinyuan started to get busy around 10.20 a.m. The communication device in the car beeped from time to time and someone would report their work process from the other side. Yi Jian had finished answering one sheet of exam paper before they entered the highway. Seeing this, Yi Jian sat at the back seat to take a nap so that she wouldn't disturb him while he was working. During work, Xia Jinyuan was poised and fierce. His words and actions displayed his noble disposition and his natural leadership. Confidence, composure, and concentration. Indeed, one could learn many qualities, which a soldier should possess, from him. Perhaps it was because Yi Jian only slept for two or three hours last night. The deep and low dot pitched voice of Xia Jinyuan sounded like a lullaby to her, making her close her eyes slowly. She had no idea when she fell asleep. When she woke up, the car had exited the highway. Xia Jinyuan was driving on the national road to the direction of her town. 
It was three in the afternoon when they arrived at Fujian town. Yi Jian went to the new recruit camp rather than her school. There were two Chinese classes in the afternoon. She assumed Mrs. Could didn't want to see her either. Carry all your belongings. And this, Xia Jinyuan didn't drive into the camp. Instead, he parked beneath the camp. He opened the trunk and took out a bag on which the characters of a Xinhua bookstore were printed. Inside the bag were the several military books that he bought yesterday. There are four books in it. They are all about basic military knowledge. You can take a look. It was not until now did Yi Jian realize that those several introductory military books she saw in the car yesterday were meant to be given to her. She didn't turn him down pretentiously. But she took over them after a momentary hesitation. With a frank smile, she thanked him. After his car drove out of her sight, she glanced at the books presented by him. Exhaling gently, she walked over to the camp. As she returned to her dormitory, she put all of her exam papers on the shelf. She opened Xia Jinyuan's bag and was about to arrange the four books from him. Inside the bag, she saw a file pocket folded neatly between the books. It was the file pocket that she saw on Xia Jinyuan's hands in the police station. Yi Jian. Her name was written on the file pocket. The handwriting style of a person could tell so much about his, her personality. And these very characters seemed powerful and formidable. As Yi Jian's fingers gently squeezed the file pocket, her eyes lit up right away, and the look on her tiny face was as bright and gorgeous as peach blossoms. This was the silver wire, which she kept thinking about last night. Hastily, she opened the file pocket and held the coiled silver wire in her hands. She gently spread it, wrapping its both ends on her left and right hand skillfully. She felt as if the cold touch of it had penetrated into her heart. Just like last night, she wrapped the silver wire in her hands deftly, as if it was a living creature that could do anything it wanted to. Swish. With a subtle sound, the silver wire flew across the air and tightly wrapped a bedpost. When Yi Jian took back the silver wire, her eyes looked resplendent and she became increasingly gorgeous. As she moved, she was as bright as the peach blossoms, when she was quiet, she was as elegant as the orchids in an empty valley. He gave it to me. He took it out from the police station and gave it to me. Chapter 96 Encounter You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 96 Encounter Translator Hen Yi Translations Editor Hen Yi Translations, but the surprised look on her face lasted only for a moment. Very soon, her face dimmed and she frowned. Was it okay for him to give it to me? No, I should ask him about it. Or else, I can't put my mind at ease even if I accept it. Since Battalion Commander Yang was not around, Yi Jian carried her school bag, heading to school to find Principal Chen. She assumed that Principal Chen might have the answer to her question. Yi Jian kept running from the camp to the National Road without slowing down her pace. In front of her was a white minivan. Inside the minivan, a middle dot aged, decently dot dressed man who seemed like a teacher inadvertently saw her running from the rear dot view mirror. The minivan kept driving for several kilometers. To the man's surprise, the distance between his vehicle and the student dot like girl was almost the same as before. So, he said to the driver, Old Huang, at what speed are you driving? The girl from behind is about to catch up with you. 60 miles per hour. Although Fujian town seems a bit poor, it has quite a busy traffic. Thank you for your understanding, explained Mr. Huang the driver, smiling. From his side, he couldn't see the running girl, so he didn't understand why the middle that aged man made that joke. Astonished, the middle the aged man said to the two teachers sitting on the back row, look behind you. That little girl has been running behind our car for several kilometers, and the distance between her and our car is almost the same as before. Her stamina is amazing. With serious looks on their faces, the two teachers on the back row rolled down the windows to glance at the back. They were both surprised. She does look like a student. However, the students of Fujian Town Middle School should be in class right now. A student is skipping classes. A female teacher around her 40s raised her question. 
Principal Chow, if she is a student, how about we stop the car and ask her to come with us? Yi Jian didn't expect that she could get a ride during her run. She got in the car, breathing a bit quickly. Student, you hopped onto our car audaciously. Aren't you afraid that we might kidnap you, said Principal Chow jokingly while looking at her. The two teachers, sitting with Yi Jian, looked at her with smiles, waiting for her answer with interest. You don't have the smell of chalk dust on you, but your hands have black and red ink, and your thumbs have the red ink paste used for seals. Let me guess, you should be the principal of a school. Yi Jian spoke with a smile. Principal Chow was shocked. You can see what my job is from these. Of course. When I got in the car, this teacher smiled at you politely. It's evident that she respects you very much. Why did she believe that the middle-aged woman next to her was a teacher? She had given her answer already. The woman carried the smell of chalk dust. Principal Chow burst into laughter. But I also could be a dean of studies. Before he could finish his words, Principal Chow had thought of something, making him laugh louder. Few deans of studies have a sense of humor. Student, you have a good observation. Since the girl had figured out that he was a principal, there's no need to guess the identities of Mrs. Song and Mrs. Zhu. In fact, not only had Yi Jian figured out that he was a principal, but she could also work out in which school he served as a principal. He should be the principal of the provincial number one middle school since he visited the Fujian Town Middle School at this moment. Principal Chen, who had been waiting at the school entrance to greet Principal Chao, was shocked to see Yi Jian getting off the car. Why was Yi Jian coming to school with old Chao? While the two principals were greeting each other, Yi Jian bowed slightly to the two teachers. It seemed like she could only visit Principal Chen when he was available. Instead of going to her classroom, she headed to Anjiesen's dormitory directly, waiting for the end of the last class. Chapter 97 She Does Not Deserve to Be a Teacher You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 97 She Does Not Deserve to Be a Teacher Translator Hen Yi Translations Editor Hen Yi Translations, I just ran into one student of your school. She's not bad, Principal Chow mentioned Yi Jian whom he encountered on his way here as soon as he entered the office. He seemed extremely intrigued by her. She has good stamina. Is she a student with sports specialization? Principal Chen felt proud as Principal Chow admired Yi Jian. Smiling, he said, Yi Jian. Her name is Yi Jian. Old Chow, you have a sharp eye as always. He turned around and picked up a glass of brewed tea, handing it to Principal Chow. Try it. Fresh tea from the mountain. They had known each other for years, so they treated one another like longtime and familiar colleagues. It is a nice tea, just as good as the tea on the market. Principal Chow took a sip of the tea, looking at his old colleague who was trying to divert the topic. Come on, tell me more about Yi Jian. In the past two years, our country has made some achievements in sports competitions, but we still have regrets in such track and field programs as the long nut distance running and the sprint. I think Yi Jian is a good candidate in this aspect. She could totally develop in this field. Principal Chow, once an athlete, had always been fond of discovering students who had potential in sports in every middle school. If they developed well, they could bring honor to their schools as well as their country. As a top senior high school of this province, the provincial number one middle school had cultivated students with sports specialization who had made good performances in major and minor competitions. A couple of them had also made their way to the university games and had achieved amazing scores. Nevertheless, Principal Chen had few interests in these issues. He took a sip of the tea, smiling. The kid is excellent in every aspect but I have no intention of letting her make achievements in sports. Why? Principal Chow asked in surprise. Old Chen, that does not sound like you. In the office downstairs, the arrival of the two teachers from the provincial number one middle school made the teachers in the office very happy. They could see how much emphasis the provincial number one middle school had put into this competition. Piles of exam paper from the provincial number one middle school were handed to the head teachers of the 8th and 9th grade. 
Suddenly, the entire office was filled with the thick smell of ink, as if the office had turned into a sea of knowledge. As Mrs. Ka entered the office, she saw Mrs. Liu, the head teacher of class one, recommending the top students of her own class. With a sharp and contempt look on her face, she issued an almost inaudible humph from her nose. And then, she assumed a completely different look. With a bright smile on her face, she walked over to her colleagues. When Mrs. Liu saw her entering, she smiled and said, Mrs. Song, this is Mrs. Ko of class two. Yi Ying and Yi Jian, the two sisters that I just told you about, are the students of Mrs. Ko. At the mention of Yi Ying, the smile on Mrs. Ko's face was rather bright. But as she heard Yi Jian's name, her smile froze instantly. Mrs. Liu, have you finished? Do you mind me having a few words with Mrs. Song? Mrs. Ko, who believed that Mrs. Liu had made things difficult for her, glared at Mrs. Liu and said sarcastically with a fake smile on her face. I should be the one talking about the students in my class. I'm afraid you don't know them very well, Mrs. Liu. All the teachers in this office were accustomed to her harsh tone. So, Mrs. Liu didn't take it seriously. Smiling, she distributed the exam paper from the provincial number one middle school to the teachers responsible for the respective subjects. Mrs. Song from the provincial number one middle school frowned slightly. Her impression of Mrs. could worsen drastically in an instant. As a decent and self-restrained teacher, she didn't say much, but her attitude towards Mrs. Ko was a bit aloof. Chapter 98 Evening the Scores Slowly You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 98 Evening the Scores Slowly Translator Hen Yi Translations Editor Hen Yi Translations in the dormitory, Yi Jian had no idea that Mrs. Ko was trying to blemish her reputation. She said to Anjessen, I've bought several sets of mock exams. Let's practice together tomorrow. Next Thursday and Friday is the midterm exam, and the exams of provincial number one middle school will be held on Saturday and Sunday. It's a bit tough to take exams for four days consecutively. She also sighed, which made Anjessen roll her eyes. Come on, you are the one under the least pressure in our class. You even asked for leave. You have no idea how stern Mrs. Ko's face was today. Every student had to tiptoe, for fear of upsetting her. Yi Jian, none of us dared to approach her. We are looking forward to your comeback and you destroying Mrs. Ko's straight face, Zhang Na, who was in the same dorm, expressed her feelings. Are you sure I can do that? Yi Jian raised her eyebrows. With a smile in her eyes, she looked at those girls who were nodding as approval. I didn't go to the classroom, precisely because I was afraid that you might get showered by the storm. That's why I waited for you in the dorm. The students were somewhat aware that the teacher-student relationship between Yi Jian and Mrs. Ku was not harmonic. Thus, they giggled at Yi Jian's words. Sometimes, they really admired Yi Jian, for she was the only one who could withstand the look in Mrs. Ku's eyes. If other students were glared by her in that way, they would have had cold feet or transferred to another class. Yi Ying's confident voice was heard from the outside. Humph, several girls in the dormitory said in unison and told Yi Jian, recently, Gao Yang came to our classroom from time to time. With the excuse of homework guidance, they sat together blatantly. However, Mrs. Cook told us that we should learn from them. There's nothing we can do. Both of them usually rank in the top five in the exams of the eighth grade, disgruntled, Zhang Na issued two humphs. As she looked outside, she rolled her eyes. They are obviously dating. The private thoughts of the teenage girls were so obvious. Yi Jian pursed her lips, smiling in a discreetly. It was time for dinner at school. Students were to have dinner together. As they arrived at the cafeteria, and Jessen poked Yi Jian's arm gently using her fingers. See that. See that. They are smiling so brightly. I also suspect that they are in love. Smiling gently, Yi Ying was walking into the cafeteria from the entrance with the tall and strong Gao Yang, who had a cold look on his face. Instantly, numerous eyes that contained all kinds of implications looked at them. But they didn't mind the gazes at all. Smiling and laughing, they walked over to the queue which Yi Jian was in. It was inevitable for them to encounter one another. 
As soon as Gao Yang saw Yi Jian, he remembered her kicking him and his bike. A trace of awkwardness appeared on his cold face. He said to Yi Ying beside him, let's go to that line which has fewer people. Yi Ying, who had always been observant, glanced at Gao Yang's face, slightly tightening her pretty eyes. Why do I have the feeling that he is hiding something between him and Yi Jian from me? With a frank smile, she said, it's okay. Every cue is the same. Didn't the dean of studies tell us to go to the teacher's office as soon as we finish dinner? We'd better hurry up. Just stay in this line. When she finished her words, she pulled Gao Yang's sleeves naturally and lined up behind Yi Jian. It was at this moment that Jiusen realized why Yi Jian said Yi Ying was not a simple girl. If Jiusen became enemies with another person, she would have felt uncomfortable by standing at the same spot with that person. Nevertheless, Yi Jian was not a simple girl either. From her face, she didn't mind at all. All right. And Jiusen shrugged. She was fine with it as well. Chapter 99 So what? You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 99 So what translator? Hen Yi Translations Editor Hen Yi Translations After Dinner, Principal Chan, Principal Chow, the teachers from the Provincial No. 1 Middle School, along with the head teachers of the classes of the 8th and 9th grade, sat in the conference room. No one was speaking. They were waiting for the two principals to finish reading the name list. Sitting in the middle, Mrs. Ku froze as Principal Chan was looking over the registration forms of the 8th grade. Never had the principal supervised any kind of competition before, why was he looking this time? There were seven classes of the 8th grade. Usually, five or six students, who were the top 10 students from their respective classes, would register for the competition. When he finished browsing the registration forms of the 8th grade, Principal Chan didn't see Yi Jian's form. Mrs. Ku, give me Yi Jian's form, Principal Chen lifted his head, keeping the registration forms. With a sharp look in his eyes, he gazed at Mrs. Ku who had been making things difficult for Yi Jian time and again. He said in a deep voice, Mrs. Ku, please hand it to me in person. With a pale look on her face, Mrs. Ku stood up abruptly. Her face was burning as she was gazed at by her colleagues. I'm sorry. I. I forgot it. I'm going to fetch it right away. She ran away swiftly. Five minutes later, while holding Yi Jian's registration form, Principal Chow said with interest, she signs up for all the subjects. Very confident. Glancing at Mrs. Ku, who had been keeping her head low since she re-entered the office, he said with a smile, if she is an all-dot-rounder, it's not impossible that she may be admitted to our school as an exception, she knows nothing. Mrs. Ku panicked as she heard such a speech. She lifted her head to explain, Principal Chow, Yi Jian is totally a bad student, she, there is no absolute top student, just as there is no absolute bad student. Mrs. Ku, choose your words cautiously, with a bright smile on his face, Principal Chow interrupted Mrs. Ku. He said cordially, we will see if she is a bad student on the exam day. The evening study session starts at 7. Well, every teacher please get prepared. The first round of mock exam begins at 7 o'clock sharp. No one listened to Mrs. Ku's explanation. The teachers stood up and went to inform their students. In the office for the deans of studies, Dean Ku handed two sets of exam paper to two students. If you want to win honors for our school, read this first. You will have a mock exam starting at 7 o'clock. Thank you, Dean Ku. Yi Ying reached out her hands eagerly. But Gao Yang pulled her back and said in a cold voice, Are you telling us to cheat in the exam? Gao Yang. What are you talking about? Yi Ying was panicked to hear him say that. Dean Ko lets us read the questions, hoping we can get better results in the exam. It's not that we are reading the answers. Wasn't it cheating to read the exam questions in advance? Principal Chen informed Yi Jian about the privileges that Yi Ying was enjoying. Yi Jian smiled calmly. Don't worry. Like I said, Yi Ying is my rival that I need to defeat. How can I let her be one step ahead of me? So what if she has read the exam paper? I can win this battle nicely all the same. 
She seemed completely confident in herself, with a contempt look hidden in her jet dot black eyes. Principal Chen, who was a bit worried before, raised his eyebrows, laughing loudly. Girl, to suppress your opponent, make sure she will never shine. Even if she does, you must outshine her. Needless to say that Yi Jian would not let Yi Ying achieve what she wished. Due to the last-minute notice, the classroom of class 1 grade 9 was evacuated for the examination's purpose. Yi Jian took out one sheet from the piles of exam paper and handed the rest to the students behind her. She picked up a pen and started to write. Chapter 100 Unicorn in the Pond You are listening to the novel at fametv.com. Chapter 100 Unicorn in the Pond Translator Hen Yi Translations Editor Hen Yi Translations In the evening, the school was quieter than in the day. In the classroom of class 1 grade 9 on the fifth floor of the teaching building, the atmosphere was so quiet that it was a bit solemn. The only audible sound in the classroom was the rustling sound of pens stroking across the paper. Every student was concentrated on answering their exam paper. It seemed that Yi Jian wrote faster than any other student. She wrote her answers so swiftly as if she didn't need to think at all. Without any pause or hesitation, she just wrote her answers smoothly as if she was taking down notes in class. With their piercing eyes, the two teachers from the provincial number one middle school glanced at the top students of Fujian Town Middle School. In total, 62 students from the 8th and 9th grade had registered for this competition. It's estimated that half of them would be eliminated from the primary contest. And the only purpose Principal Chow conducted the second selection on the next day of midterm was to strengthen the students. They needed to know whether the students could produce a stable performance during the four-day examinations, and to see which students would have cold feet or give up halfway. If anyone could stand out from this competition, it would be. Smiling gently, Mrs. Song walked up beside Yi Jian. No wonder Principal Chen embarrassed Mrs. Ko. It was unimaginably weird that such an excellent student was suppressed by the head teacher of her class. It was the first time that she ran into such a circumstance during the more than 20 years of her teaching career. After standing for less than three minutes, Mrs. Song slightly tightened her pupils. Quietly, she walked over to Mrs. Zhu, who taught math at the advanced classes of the provincial number one middle school, whispering, Old Zhu, go and watch over her. It's either the top students or the cheating students that could draw the teacher's attention during exams. Among all the teachers in the provincial number one middle school, Mrs. Zhu was the only one who had served as the exam not setter at the National Mathematical Olympiad, and she had also led students abroad to participate in Mathematical Olympiad competition many times. When she arrived beside Yi Jian's desk, she couldn't move a single step, as if her legs were rooted to the spot. Since the two teachers alternately stood beside one student's desk for a long time, they had accidentally drawn the attention of some students. Yi Ying was one of them. At the sight of this, the look in her eyes was as gloomy and cold as dirty well water. The ballpoint pen in her hands was about to be broken into two. She was exerting so much strength that the veins were visible from the back of her hands. No matter how concentrated Yi Jian was, it is hard to ignore such a cold and dirty glare. Calmly, she raised her eyes to look in front in a casual way, gazing at Yi Ying, who was a row away from her, for a few seconds. She gave Yi Ying a scornful smile. Her smile, so unpleasant to look at, also contained her disdain for me. Yi Ying gritted her teeth. Her eyes became colder and gloomier. She glared at Yi Jian. As she was about to freak out, something seemed to occur to her. She took a deep breath, controlling her mood and looked away by biting her tongue. No. I cannot let Yi Jian influence me. Dad is correct. Before I become strong enough to deal with Yi Jian, the first thing I should learn is tolerance. Yi Jian had observed Yi Ying's reactions. As she lowered her watery black eyes, the look in them became a bit chilling. The reason behind Yi Ying's success in her past life, apart from her capabilities, was that Yi Zhifan offered advice to her. The last question. Can't you solve it? Mrs. Zhu felt anxious because Yi Jian hadn't written for a long time. It's a bit difficult. But you have learned the knowledge, which the question is testing on, in your eighth grade. Think about it. 